thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to be talking about tech questions. So we already have some people in chat. We have Luke and Games of Fire, it looks like. Tabletop Backer Party. So we have Daniel in chat and Battle... I think I already said Battle Cry. Did I say Battle Cry? I don't know. <laughs> and Fatal Paper Cut and Luke, thank you so much for everybody that joined us today. So any questions that you guys have I'm going to be answering today, we're going to be going over equipment, what is the most important things to start your setup in streaming board games because there's lots of streamers out there and there's lots of video game streamers out there especially or even just people talking like this ahead to a camera to you guys out on the internet but it does take a whole separate level actually bringing board game streaming to you because you have to have cameras mounted above you which I have and light from all sorts of different angles to combat glare on the table there's a whole lot going into it we're going to talk about where I personally started with my equipment and then where I am right now so you guys can kind of see how everything progressed because when we started we didn't have a whole bunch of stuff we just had some webcams for the most part okay so let's take a look here. What is used for the beginner setup and how much does it cost to stream board games? Okay. So the first and most important thing for streaming board games as opposed to just recording is you're going to need a cat <laughs> to be on your stream and be annoying, okay? No, uh, the first thing you're gonna need is really great internet, okay? So internet wise, I always recommend at least 20 megabytes for upload speeds. And why I do that is because once you start dipping into that 10 territory, you do start getting a lot of choppiness, you know? You end up getting a lot of choppiness during your streams. And it can't be, it's not necessarily intentional. I mean, a lot of people say, okay, yeah, you can go on stream with 10 megabytes per second, no problem. But if you get something that ends up making you dip and you go to eight or you go to five for some reason, it's just better to go for that 20. And then if you do dip, it shouldn't make any issues for you, okay? <laughs> yes, our cat will be a part of the whole show because she's, it's, it's her time right now and she's gonna wreck all the equipment I have set up for everyone here. <laughs> Hello, Smirk and Dagger. How are you guys doing? Just started streaming this week. Oh, I'm excited. I'm going to have to go check out your stream. I'm really excited about that. So, yes, if, and if you want to be a good YouTube streamer, you need lots of random cat butt on your streams, okay? <laughs> so, very, very, at the very first part is getting that internet and getting it at at least 20 megabytes per second, okay? That's my recommended megabytes per stream. You don't have to get your gigabyte service or anything like that, but at least 20, okay? So that takes care of most of any sort of choppiness. The other thing that you have to be aware of is the fact that your stream will not always be perfect, and you kind of just have to deal with that because no matter how great of an internet you do have, internet service you do have, there is room for things going down, for tech stuff just not working. I feel like every single time that I start a stream, it's always like panic. It's like, is everything going to be online? <laughs> oh, Luke says it's, it's weird to see me stream alone. Yes, megabits per second. So you're in sheer panic, though, every time you're streaming. And it, that's a lot of reason why people don't stream. It's a lot of reasons why you don't see a lot of reviewers streaming because, one, it's never gonna be perfect. You're gonna have cat on the table. You're gonna have maybe your stream break up. You're gonna have all sorts of things happening and you have to be prepared for that, okay? Second most important thing is gonna be your PC. And there's lots of different ways to do this. I'm gonna just explain and go over a few. I personally have one PC that I use. It's in front of me right now. And when I started with webcams, the really important part of the PC was to have multiple USB outputs or inputs, okay? And that is because you wanted to feed as I wanted to feed at least three cameras into those inputs, which I'll get to here in a second because the cameras with the inputs and webcams and having so many of them, 
like I stream with three webcams at a time for the most part, but I had to do it very sneakily because you can't always do it on every, uh, every computer that you have. If you're looking for having really great streaming quality, you'll want a computer with a high CPU, so a really great CPU. If you're looking for something to have all of the cameras feed into and process all of that video stuff, then you're going to need something with really great gra graphics processor, so GPU. Mine has both a fantastic GPU and CPU. However, when I started loading in all of my really great like Canon cameras and stuff like that, whenever I started putting two, three cameras on as opposed to webcams, I did see an issue with having so many webcams plugged directly into my computer and then my graphics processing while also trying to stream at a great rate and getting that out to you guys. So I solved that in a completely different way, but if you're looking into that, one, you wanna have, like I said, many USB inputs if you're going towards webcams. If you already have a camera at your home and everything, you're gonna have to have some different equipment to feed all of that in. So as we talk about <laughs> internet and just your PC, does anybody have any questions first off, okay? So one, <laughs> Oh, well, thank you, Dr. Glory Hawk. Thank you so much. <laughs> so yes, a good internet and a good PC. You could always split your PCs up, have one of them. There's plenty of people that do one PC as just your streaming PC, and then one where you basically feed in the screen of another PC into that, and then you have one that processes all your stuff. I like having one simplified thing that I can just take with me everywhere. So my setup was, is very compact and it's easy to just take with you everywhere. Ooh, smirk and dagger. Okay, so you're a Mac guy. I'm moving in that direction. <laughs> I'm moving in that direction. <laughs> I may be doing some of that in the, in the future and I'll have more knowledge on that in the future, but you're gonna be using Thunderbolt ports and all sorts of stuff for that, which most of the equipment I have, I believe, um, can be transferred to Mac as well, except for maybe the Stream Deck. I don't know about the Stream Deck, but I'm going to actually show you all of the stuff that I have here, okay? So, equipment-wise, what did I start with? We're going we're gonna to go over to the web here. I'm going to show you the equipment that I started with, okay? I actually made a little wish list here on like the B&H photo sort of thing. So you can kind of see all the stuff that I worked with. So in the beginning, in the beginning, <laughs> hello, Nathan coming in. I use these Logitech cams right here. I had the C920 and I ran two C920s and one C922 and I ran two of them through a USB bar, basically a port bar where you could plug a whole bunch of them in. And I ran the other 920 through another USB part, like port, okay? And that's really, really important because you can't stack all of the same C920s or C922s in the same USB port because then you start getting errors. And going into this, I didn't know all of that. So yes, as far as webcams go, this is like the cheap holy grail sort of, like this thing, we streamed with C920s for a really long time. It had to be at least a year, year and a half, and that's all we streamed with. And the fantastic thing about the C920s is that it super portable so you can take them anywhere and if I, you have a laptop like I stream everything through a laptop it made it really easy for me to take my webcams with me take my laptop with me and then stream anywhere I wanted okay for the overhead camera and this is a really really great trick I should have brought up the little uh, device that I used with the overhead camera so I loved the C920s and the fact that all I had to do was screw on one of those onto a boom mic stand or a, a just regular mic stand that you would get. It's $20. It's on Amazon. 
and you just screw it on there and it, you can face it down because you know it's a mic stand so it goes up and then it goes out and the thing is so light you can basically just tape the cord around the boom mic stand and then boom you have an overhead cam and it worked really really well it was super fantastic and it, again it was super super portable i was able to take that little mic stand everywhere with me it collapsed all up and you could like put it on a little shoulder bag on your shoulder okay so that is what i used for the majority of my early streaming i mean that was that was it it was it was super nice and easy i think that the biggest thing with the logitech cameras is one you're going to have a shorter field of view because although you know you can have it stream you know in 1080p and everything it does with the way the camera is it like makes it just a shorter field of view whenever you're looking over here but we could always end up trying to fit in all of our games we did we did the best possible on it and everything and i think i think that's a good place for everybody to start the other thing that we had which we did come from a podcasting background so we already had this on hand was we had a mixer and this is probably i've this is one of the most important things that Suzanne actually told me whenever I was first coming into this. And she said, it doesn't matter really what your video looks like, but if you have really bad audio, nobody's ever going to listen to you. Like if your audio is terrible, it's just not going to happen. People aren't going to wait around. And even if you have the best video in the world, people aren't going to go ahead and sit there and watch you. And so I was really happy to be able to have a mixer that actually plugged into my USB port and I ran that together with one of my cameras well two of my cameras on my bar there and it was no problem at all this one here you plug it into the wall for power so it's not powered by your actual laptop or anything like that and that's what we ended up doing our audio through along with some sure microphones let's see if I put them on here Oh, these headset mics. I loved these headset mics so much. This was like our splurge item back in the day. <laughs> Bye, Luke. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. <laughs> yeah, the splurge item for us was these here. Everybody, well, not everybody, lots of people in the community hate them for some reason. I mean, there's plenty of people that use these Shure mics. These are these are still some of my favorite mics, but everybody complains about you looking like you're uh, like some sort of telemarketer person or something like that. But they plugged right into the mixer and we always had fantastic audio quality with them. I, I probably still wish I was using these, but due to demand from the public, we actually retired these. I actually still have them. They're like right here. Um, because people didn't want to see microphones in our face, although it is silly because I really, I really like them. They're very, very, like they can take a beating. <laughs> I took these things with me everywhere. <laughs> yeah, the equipment that I used, I used all throughout podcasting and then into video casting and I took them with me everywhere so all to all the conventions that i went to and everything and with this stuff like these microphones and everything they collapsed it was a very small setup i think the biggest portion of the setup was the mixer on this and in the future i think i would pick a smaller mixer the biggest thing with this behringer here was that it had well, since it was for podcasting, it had a bunch of stuff for podcasting on it that I really liked. And I really liked being able to adjust everybody's microphones and everything on that. So that was my beginning equipment. I've seen a lot of people use Yeti mics and everything, and I've used those as well. Yeti mics work really well. However, you can't have them close to any sort of computers or anything. So if you're streaming like I am right now, where I have the computer directly in front of me, if I had a Yeti mic right here, you would have to have it like right here and the gain turned down really low and you'd have to mess with a lot of the settings and everything for that. So I stayed away from actually some of the condenser mics 
because of that, because I didn't want to catch too much background noise, because I actually stream in an extremely small room. Like the room that you actually see behind me right now, this is pretty much the entirety of the room right here. Uh, the camera that I use right now is probably, I want to say, two feet away from the wall, maybe. And you I have a really ultra wide angle lens on this and you can see like that this is the room that pretty much that I stream in, although I make the back look vast on this. So check your internet, really important. Make sure that your PC is going to have enough compatible ports if you're doing the USB cams, because that's really important. And check your CPU and your GPU speeds, because if you're gonna be loading up all those webcams in there, you'll need a really great graphics card. And then your CPU is going to be what is go going to be uploading everything to the internet for you usually, okay? <laughs> Fatal Paper Cut says, and have red hair dye. You know what, that helps. That's a whole different conversation on talking about how uh, to attract attention to your stream in a market that has a whole lot of saturation in it, you know? Like, that's a whole different marketing. That's a marketing video. We're not talking about marketing today. We're talking about equipment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the stuff that I'm using right now is vastly different, vastly, vastly different. Oh my gosh, okay. So the stuff that I'm using right now, let's get to one of the cameras here. This is my overhead camera right here. This is the EOS R. This is a full frame camera. With the full frame camera, I 100% wanted whatever you saw over our table to be the best quality possible. So I went with a full frame camera on this because even if I blew it up what you were seeing on the table, I wouldn't be losing any detail when I was streaming to you guys, all right? Games of Fire says, good idea, do a marketing stream in the future. Oh my goodness, we can talk about SEO stuff for your uh, YouTube channels and all sorts of stuff. It's it's a deep thing to dive into Games of Fire, okay? <laughs> and Fatal says, dye the stream cat red. Maybe that might, that'll attract a lot of attention. Then we'd have a cat on stream and it would be red. <laughs> With this EOS R camera right here, I have a 35 millimeter lens. Okay, so if you don't know a whole lot about cameras, it's really important to have a camera that is going to have a low f-stop, especially for board game streaming. I'm assuming for video game streaming as well because a lot of people who are streaming video games stream in really low level light because they do what I do behind me where they have it backlit with different colors and stuff, okay? Having a low f-stop on a lens is going to give you the ability to have a dark room become a little bit brighter. And I went for this specifically with our overhead camera for the fact that if I have a whole bunch of lights on top of a board game, I wanted the least amount of glare as possible. So I was going to be dimming the lights and then I was going to be upping that shutter or lowering that shutter to a, like a 0.2, a 0.3 in there, okay? So tabletop backer party. I'm getting pulled in every which direction. I need to bail to watch this later. Thanks for the short amount I got here live. Absolutely, Daniel. Come back and uh, you, can, you can finish the whole thing. <laughs> so this particular thing, I really, really needed that low f-stop. So if you go out searching for a camera and that's, or you have a camera at home that you want to use for streaming board games, and you might look at the lens that you're using and make sure that you have the correct f-stop on your lens because I don't just have a darker backlit room because it looks cool. I also wanted it because it makes the board game on the actual table look really nice with the least amount of glare possible as I could make without doing anything else crazy to my room other than just having some lights up, okay? What else do we have here? So my front camera is the Canon M50. And 
as a note, everyone, so if you're looking into cameras that you are going to be streaming with, like you may have your own one at home, you do have to have a video card with you, which Elgato, they have a video card. Let's go on over to Elgato. Let's see here. So Elgato has these little video cards right here. I don't like their stick ones very much. They have one here that you can actually plug directly into uh, your computer if you have a tower and stuff. But I use something like this for, for a little while. It was like my in-between on this, okay? I use this Elgato HD60S and I plugged my camera into this and then my this into my computer. Right, exactly, a capture card. And you can actually use this for Lots of people use it for video games, and you can use it for video cameras, or regular cameras, I'm sorry, video cameras usually have their own processing and stuff. You usually don't need to do an HDMI. You can do an SDI and stuff like that with it, but for the most part, you'd be using this. I personally did not like the little tiny stick that they have. I think they have like $120. You can get a little, or maybe $100. It's a little stick, but this was... <sighs> always super good to me. I have never had any issues with it, okay? You running multiples of this was the biggest thing because again, in video games, you know, you might be running one of these for a camera, for a front facing camera, but you know, we're we're looking at two or three of these suckers. <laughs> it adds up really quickly. It adds up really really quickly. I got one of these and then I moved on to something else, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But this is something that you're going to need anytime you take an HDMI uh, output from any sort of camera and you're going to want to plug it into your computer. So the HDMI goes from your camera to the video card to your computer, usually on like a C, a USB-C. Now, with my Canon M50, there's a big thing between clean output and not clean output, I guess, is like the alternate to that. So clean output means that you guys, you guys get to see me and you guys get to see my face and there's nothing on here besides like the stuff that I put on here like this. You know, I can turn that on and off because that's through OBS here, okay? If I didn't have the right lens on this Canon M50, you would see like a little box around my face for the tracking and all sorts of stuff. So if you're going through and you're picking out a camera to stream with, you got to really do your homework. The M50 does not automatically have clean output. So although it's a really fantastic camera to stream with, you really have to make sure which particular lens that you're putting on this camera in order to make it work correctly, which this one here is a manual lens that I have. It's a Rokinon lens. Let's go back here. I really like the lens. Again, with this lens here, it was a really, it's an F2 for the f-stop. So works really well in low level light. This is a manual lens. So whenever I go ahead and put my can up here, it's never going to get, it's never going to come in focus. Like this is set at a focus that's right here and like that's it. If you move out of this focus, you just, you get blurry. Uh, that's the downfall of that, but it's it's what was working and what ne was what was needed, okay? It's a pretty, as far as like cameras go, inexpensive camera that I was able to stream with with an inexpensive lens at the time, okay? The other thing about the cameras versus video cameras, I don't know. How many of you are thinking of like cameras versus video cameras? Cameras, I went for the mirrorless cameras because one, they didn't overheat whenever you would be streaming for a long time. And they were more compact than video cameras were for the most part. I've seen Board Game Geek's streaming setup and everything and they have some pretty compact video cameras and everything. <laughs> Battle Crisis, that explains Dr. Glory Hog's look all the time. That's right. You have to have, if you're putting multiple people into that range there, 
uh, it does it does become much harder to get everybody in the right range and have them all in focus whenever you're working with that manual lens battle cry. That's that's what happens. <laughs> But I've kept the really great camera that uh, can autofocus above us because the board games are the really important part, right? <laughs> you have to make sure that those come out the clearest. Nobody cares about this part. <laughs> oh my goodness. So oh, I lost I lost track of what I was saying. Okay, so mirrorless cameras. I went with mirrorless specifically because they overheat less than a mirrored camera, a regular camera. They were compact for me. They were lightweight. I have really bad back problems, so it was something that I could take with me that was going to be really lightweight. Um, what else? Wait, there are board games? Yeah. <laughs> I know that if you start going into video cameras and stuff, they do end up getting bigger. And so that, for me, I did not go the video camera route because of those particular things. Ultimately, video cameras are going to be easier to stream with because they're meant to be streamed with, okay? <laughs> In order to get my Canons here to work, I have to make sure I have special programs running for them. In order to get them past that 30-minute portion where they shut off. And they don't completely shut off. The screen basically goes black on them, okay? You're also going to need... Uh, batteries that you can plug into the wall so they don't come with actual batteries you have to like get either a second market battery or a battery directly from the manufacturer that you can actually plug something into and I have that on both of them so we have like HDMI we have two HDMI cords well we want one HDMI cord for each camera one battery cable for each camera going to each camera and I have the M50 connected to the computer with a data cable to help it stay on. And then I have the EOS R connected to my phone for a couple of reasons with the EOS R, but to keep it on, but also to help control it and control the focus while we're actually streaming. You are way dedicated to live streaming. <laughs> Um, you know what, Nathan, I worked a bunch of different jobs for board game companies in order to afford all this equipment. So I was working full time at my regular job, as well as I was working on the back burner for different game companies, doing different jobs for them here and there in order to afford all of this equipment. Otherwise, it would not have been in my, like we would have been with our webcams for a very long time because they were inexpensive and it was a great place to start at. Uh, I was just lucky to be able to have another revenue of income that I could put directly into the thing that I was doing. So for me, it was like a business move. It was like, all right, I'm getting work from these companies and then any sort of revenue I get from them, I'm putting directly back into where I'm getting the work from because I expect this to come to a bigger picture at some point. And so for me, that was that was my thing. And it was really, really hard work. Like I cannot stress to you enough because it was, it, it still is many, many late nights of doing stuff in the middle of the night and staying up for really long hours to get all of this done. So in order just to create the revenue to get that in to fund this project. So I'm happy with where I'm at. I'm really happy with where I'm at, but it did take a lot of work to get there. Yeah, respect for that hustle, that's right. <laughs> the other thing that we use as far as audio. So audio, let's go back, let's go back one. This was like my splurge right here, it was the Rode go lavalier uh, microphone systems. This is new. This was kind of risky because I, I got these at the beginning of the year and they just came out, okay? Yes, absolutely, Fatal. Those webcams I showed earlier are good for starting for sure and they add the ch as the channel grows and you learn more, 100%. If you are starting, I don't recommend going out and getting all this equipment. Start with the webcams. Start with what you have at home. If you have a DSLR camera at home, use that that DSLR camera like absolutely go with what you have at home go start with those webcams when you're just starting out 
like that is where you want to start at okay uh, the second portion of this is just because people ask about my current setup and I want to make sure that they know what I'm using now so then I don't have to continually answer those questions over and over again <laughs> okay uh, this right here if you do have a DSLR and you are looking for a microphone to take with you somewhere I I really like these I really do I can plug these into my mirrorless cameras and I can use them to record interviews with I can plug them into my ATEM um, which is what we use now I can use just the little lavalier pieces with them uh, this was something that was really hard to get though this was like a really ex really expensive splurge for us on this but I am enjoying them they work really well I really like them um, and it does make things wireless so everything like looks very very streamlined like you know you can't really see a whole lot of stuff on you, you I'm wearing a white shirt so you can see the one right now let me get up here Ta -da! But, but that's about it okay so let's uh, let's head on down to the table here I get to show you guys all the back burner stuff here. All right. The other thing that we have all of our cameras going into, and this looks like this because of the frame rates. It's it in real life this doesn't look like it's blinking, okay? <laughs> this is my A10 mini. This is my favorite thing for putting all of our our cameras together onto one thing. You know how I was talking about those video cards and how many you would have to go ahead and have. You'd have to have one for every single camera. This solved that problem right there. This runs hot, so I have it on uh, basically like a little PC fan thing here, which like one of the fans is broke on it, so the other fans are working. But this here can actually input four different HDMI import or plugs into it. You also plug your audio into this. So I have two audio ports right here, which I can actually plug in those wireless pieces, but I'm hardwired into it right now. Oh, thank you, Games of Fire. I really like my keyboard too. I can make it change colors too, super fun. But this here, I can push these buttons here and I can make lots of cool stuff happen. So if I want to make my picture in picture go away, all I have to do is press this button and then I can make it come back like, this thing here I love this thing so much and this I can have my uh, I can have like this one here is my forward cam my forward facing cam so I can press that and then it's my forward facing cam and that's programmed just to take that up in the up pan, upper corner then this is the over the table cam I'll you put a another camera here that will be on the table I'll put my switch over here or something like that and this pulls in the audio from each one of those as well. It'll pull in the audio from every camera and stuff. So if you have the camera far away, you could essentially go ahead and pull the audio from that camera onto this as well. This is less than the cost of one of those video cards that for every single camera. And it's, it's so good. It's so good. I love it so much. I would I would not go back. That's probably one of my favorite purchases there. My next favorite purchase here that I have, and this is a reasonably priced thing, is the Stream Deck here. And as you can see, all of these here are little programmed buttons, buttons that I actually programmed. And I really like this. So I can basically press any of these buttons, and this one here will do my tweet for me that I send out onto Twitter. This one here will go ahead and show me what sort of YouTube people are watching me here. I have one that shows my PC and I have all these set up that directly to Streamlabs. So I can just go ahead and go, okay, here's my waiting music. Here's my intro. Okay, now we're going to switch over to the front cam right here. Okay, now we're going to switch over to our table cam and that's going to be that one right here. So this here has been a lifesaver for me. What are those cameras that can zoom in on specific areas of an image live or is handled by software, Dice Tower used? Okay, so the ones that zoom in like that are gonna be actual video cameras and they have a controller on it 
that you can go ahead and plug into the video camera where you can control basically like the movement of the camera and then zooming in with it. I'm not sure exactly which camera Dice Tower is using at this time, but I know for like GMT and stuff like that and um, yeah, Board Game Geek didn't have really one that would zoom in a whole lot, I think. But I know that their cameras are expensive. We're talking many, many thousands of dollars. Like, they're they're crazy expensive for what it, for what it is. <laughs> but those ones are going to be ran through SDI, uh, usually, like little SDI cables. For me, as far as, like, my focusing and stuff, this is actually my overhead right here. And so if I want to focus on particular things, I can actually change the focus on this for my overhead camera right here. So like right now, I should have the focus in this general area, and that's going to allow me to do that. But I can actually control it all through here. So I actually have this camera going directly to my phone so I can do somewhat of a focusing thing for everyone, okay? So it makes it a little bit better for everyone, right? Try to move this back here. But the Blackmagic A10 Mini, though, is uh, so good. Like, it's, it's, for me, it was the best way to run all of the cameras I wanted to because it's going to take load off of your PC here because your PC, it was get, mine was getting bogged down by having so many cameras on it, basically, okay? Let's see here. I just want to be able to make good videos, try to submit to Board Game Breakfast. <laughs> It's not essential. I always thought it was cool tech. Absolutely. The fans are hypnotizing. Yes, like they, it looks fancy, right? This gets pretty hot. And of course, I always want to protect my phone as well. So my phone ends up resting on here as well. The stream deck doesn't get hot at all. So like that doesn't actually need a fan. I just like it being close, okay? <laughs> Lots of those folks are just using cell phones. You know what? That is 100% true, Fatal Paper Cut. Whenever you start doing stuff for that, for Dice Tower, Board Game Breakfast, and everything, a lot of people are using their webcams. They're using their cameras on their personal computers. They're using the cameras on their phones. There was a short time there where we, the very first thing that we did when we, uh, when we, we were recording at Games U. I was using the phone I have right now, which is an iPhone, I think seven or something like that. I was using that to do all of the recording. And then I was recording the audio on my mixer with my task cam. And then I was syncing everything up and then putting it all together and then putting it out to the internet before we did any sort of live streaming. So yeah, absolutely. Like that 100% is an, a great way to go, a fantastic way to go. And that's almost like, a whole nother thing that's actually like I mean the equipment is so much less expensive when it's for your phones and then you know when you move up your webcams and stuff it's maybe a little bit more expensive and then when you move up to where we're at now it starts getting like ridiculously expensive which is really really not cool absolutely so I would totally recommend doing stuff with that and you can actually go ahead and uh, you can connect I know there's ways for you to connect your phone to stream live in a way where you can use it as like a webcam. I I know that for a fact that is an option that is available. I have not done it before, but it is an option that is available. You can absolutely do that and just have your your actual phone run that. The biggest thing would be the audio for that. So and making sure it was synced and everything. So I think I could do it, getting over my inherent social anxiety on the other hand. Yes. <laughs> yes, fatal paper cut. There's lots of social anxiety that goes into it. I am by nature an introvert. So <laughs> that was a big portion of it. And I think that starting by doing, what was it? I was doing, I was doing something with Roy. It was like short little, you know, board game things on like what your board game of the month was or the week was something like that and that helped me get over my anxiety was going all right I'm going to be doing like these short like little one minute 
episodic things and just talking to the camera and putting yourself out there. And then the easier that that got, then I would go ahead and <laughs> then leading into this didn't seem as bad. Like leading into this, it just takes practice. You know, now uh, I'll do panels for like Phoenix Comic Con and stuff like that or talk to you guys while streaming and everything. And you already have all of that stuff built into you on kind of like etiquette and your train of thought of where things are going and not being nervous as much. Maybe still a little nervous always. <laughs> so Battle Cry says, what? <laughs> Let's see here. Over the last two years, I've decided to delete 20 videos. Oh my gosh, Games of Fire. Now I have a few recorded and need to figure out how to edit them. Why did you delete all the videos? That's terrible. Yes, that's right. Dr. Glory Hog, favorite game Friday. That's right. That's what I did. Favorite game Friday. It really helped almost essentially train me to do video work because the segments were so small that I was able to get them out and start processing them and getting them out every week. And then after that, getting a little bit bigger project didn't seem as bad. Like it was just a lot easier to do it that way in little increments, okay? Um, what else? What else do we need to talk about? We need to talk about software. We went over cameras and all that other stuff. Software. OBS. OBS, Open Broadcasting System. I used OBS forever. I recently switched over to Streamlabs OBS because of an error issue that I was getting via uploading the data from my ATEM Mini and my cameras and everything uh, through OBS. It just wasn't working for me. There was some sort of issue that was going on there. And so I switched to Streamlabs OBS, which is essentially the same underlying product except with Streamlabs over it, which makes it kind of fancy, okay? Uh, I recommend finding out everything you can about OBS and how to run it because that is how I put together all of my shows, my waiting screen, you know, I mean, every scene that we go through is an OBS, right? Let's see here. Games of Fire says, I was too hard on myself. I'm not letting myself delete anymore. Yeah, 100%. Don't delete anything, okay? <laughs> uh, and you absolutely have to be able to look back at how far you've come, okay? That, that is so huge. I did that the other day where I looked at our really old stuff and I was like, oh my gosh, can you believe what our old stuff looked like? It was insane. It was, I mean... Oh my gosh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, we're gonna go look together. How about that? Let's go look together. <laughs> Let's go see where where we started at. Let's pull up the web here, okay? Thumbnails, super important, everyone. Thumbnails, so important. Let's see if I can't find some of these gems back in the day. All right, so where's the ones where we were recording? at the uh, the one place. I'm gonna have to turn down my audio for this. I wonder if it's not gonna let me run it while I'm doing everything, yeah. Okay, so this was when we were like, all right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna start podcasting slash recording stuff at Games U. This is us, everyone, okay? And with this, I believe I was recording on my phone. We had our mixer and we had little mics that we, uh, we hung on to. Like that's, that's where we started, okay? <laughs> Don't be ashamed of where you started because it's, it's come a long way and I'm really happy with where we've come. And there are people that go back and look at that stuff, okay? Yeah, gasp, hair that was not red. It happened at one point, right? <laughs> This is when I was doing the favorite game Friday stuff, you know? I mean, you have you have to have a beginning somewhere and practice with all that, okay? Absolutely. Don't be don't be deleting stuff games of fire anymore. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, hey, you're getting there. Being super hard on yourself can also be a good thing. Try to be perfect in whatever you do, but sometimes I just gotta wing it and see what happens. Okay. So, yeah, like I am a perfectionist because, and that's 
a good thing in a way because it does drive you in making sure that you always try to produce the best content that you can produce at that time but you don't you can't be hard on yourself for what you've done in the past because that's in the past now and you're always getting better okay <laughs> So your Dexter and I are doing Favorite Game Friday. It's a great practice to try to get coherent video that strives to be more than just saying a board game's name within the span of 15 seconds. Nathan, absolutely. Especially for live content and talking to people and being able to keep that train of thought going and conversation going and everything. Starting with those small little 15 second spans and just practicing saying things and how you're going to say things and you're almost building a persona at that point when you're going through everything like it's a fantastic fantastic place to start okay so streamlabs obs i don't know if any of you have used it have any of you used streamlabs obs at all can we can take a look i know i queued some of that up as well here So let's go into our display. We're going to bring this down here. And it's going to get real trippy here for a second. <laughs> All right. Streamlabs OBS. Hopefully, this doesn't look too trippy for everyone here, okay? So Essentially, what you do is you have your little screens here that you can go through, and I'm not going to click on these ones here. These are actually the ones that I control through my stream deck right here. And this is my waiting music here. And so once I click this, then my waiting music will come up. And then I click onto this, which is the intro that I already have programmed in. And then we have our live cam right here, which switches directly over just to our live feed. And this one here has my browser in it. So this is actually the one we do whenever we are doing our Kickstarter show. I have a browser and it's actually kind of showing what is happening on here. And you can just pipe in one of these displays here, okay? You have your audio and stuff that you can fix over through here. I totally recommend exploring everything you need to know about OBS. It is one of the best things you can do. You can add in any sort of stuff that I add in to have like little banners going up in the corner. Boom. This is the banners in this is just some pictures that I have in a little file folder and it makes it go through like a uh, like a slideshow. That's all this is is a slideshow of little mini pictures that I can click on and off at any time that I want, okay? And you can also program your Stream Deck to do that as well. So let's see here. I end up just being the straight man to Dexter's wacky antics, but we develop more characters as we go. Absolutely. You, everybody has a persona when they're streaming. 100%, okay? That's just, it's part of the thing. It's part of the thing. But yeah, Streamlabs OBS, it's, gosh. Like, it's really, really, really important to learn everything you can about Streamlabs OBS, everyone. And let's see here. Let's try to get my, my stuff going back over. Get to my live cam. There we go. <laughs> Let's see here. Games of Fire says, I wish I wasn't doing this alone. My husband passed away a few years ago, and I think it adds... Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah, so with all of the stuff that I do, like, don't be discouraged by doing it over alone because it's tough, and I've shown a lot of great little things that help you with shortcuts and everything along the way, like the stream deck and stuff like that. Um, and you can go online and learn. There's plenty of things that you can go online and learn with OBS and everything. But uh, I actually produced the show for a really long time on my own. And I still do all of the technical setup and all I have all of the technical know-how. And I put all the technical stuff in. 
uh, for our show. Just 100%. I do all of the technical stuff. Glory Hog, just this last year, recently came in and started uploading a lot of stuff for me where he'll set up the events and I've taught him some stuff on how to uh, build the thumbnails and stuff like that. And so he's now contributing to that, which is super, super helpful. So it's always super helpful to have another person doing it as well. But don't be discouraged if you're the only one doing it because you, you can totally, totally do it. And yes, it is overwhelming, especially at first and all of this stuff coming into it, it can seem very, very vast. But don't be discouraged by any of that. It comes with time. You have to put plenty of time into this, you know? Uh, especially, I mean, I can't tell you how many hours of just straight up research that I've done on all of this. And that was kind of part of why I made this particular video is because I wanted just to give everybody a sort of quick overview of everything that I was using. So. When I say OBS Streamlabs, you can go, oh, okay, that's what Gloryhound uses. This is kind of a little bit how it works here. You know, we've got some scenes and stuff. I'm going to go investigate that. And it gives you a really fantastic starting point on where you can go ahead and take that and then run with it. Because there's plenty of stuff out there that you can use at your disposal. And there's plenty of cool free stuff you can use out there at your disposal. Like, uh, what is it? Uh, Audacity, I think. Let me Let me double check which is a audio, um, let me double check the name of it here. It, it's gonna, it's gonna make, make it so you can edit your audio. I'm pretty sure it's Audacity. I don't see it up here though. But things like that, you know, iMovie. I edited everything on my phone for a really long time as well in the very beginning. So I used iMovie a lot. There's some really great free programs out there. So let's see here, I've finally gotten myself to take it one step at a time. Yay, that's so exciting. <laughs> Absolutely, it just, it just takes time. And, you know, confidence in yourself to make sure that, you know, to just submit those things. It's not even about necessarily always creating it. Just the submission portion, portion can seem really daunting. And the fact that, oh no, I'm putting myself out here on the internet and people could hate it. And it could be terrible. I don't know, but that's okay. It's the internet. People can be terrible on the internet and it's okay. <laughs> you learn from it and then you do something else. <laughs> or, or you go the really great way where you put it on the internet and you're really nervous about it and then it does really well and you're like, well, that worked out. <laughs> I wouldn't have known that would have happened. <laughs> right? You kind of have to take that risk out there in order to get any sort of reward. And if you're not taking any ris risks, then you are, what, doing zero? There's some sort of thing for it where if you don't do a thing, then you can never have a chance of success or something like that. There's, I don't know, there's some sort of wise words about it <laughs> that I can't remember for sure. <laughs> well, does anybody have any questions? I know I probably threw like just a ton of just stuff at everyone super fast. Lots of technical stuff, lots of just overviews of things. This was supposed to just be a quick like, here, go here and here's all the cool stuff that I'm using. If you want more information, you can always seek that out. If you guys are really interested in any sort of marketing stuff, uh, like I said, that's a whole different board game and I can do another quick overview of just kind of like, you know, the stuff that I've learned with hashtags and making uh, things come to the top of YouTube lists and stuff like that. And uh, because like, for example, there's a reason why we're not streaming on multiple plat platforms anymore. And that's due to uh, people, well, that's due to Facebook not making our stuff come up as fast if we're streaming on multiple platforms and so on. Because every platform wants to have their own crazy thing and they all want to be first and everything. And then like, you know, if you go ahead and stream via Twitch and uh, YouTube or Twitch and Facebook and everything, Twitch won't put your stuff up to the top. And then 
if you do put stuff on Twitch, you know, you always have to download it. You can you can download it to YouTube, but if you do it seven days later, it works better than having it, uh, you know, five days later. There's like all sorts of stuff that goes into that. So it's super crazy, super crazy. Yeah, and on Facebook, you know, you can't, unless you're running a special gaming profile and everything, because there's gaming profiles that you have to select in order to get in the hashtag gaming group of everything and stuff. And you have to go in and um, like apply for that and all sorts of stuff. Unless you get into that, they still want to run you at like the, what is it, 720, 720p uh, instead of like 1080. And I was not super down with that either and all the footwork having to get to that point. And it, each one is its own separate monster. So yeah, that that's why that whole marketing sort of thing is like its own separate, like a lot of stuff. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff, but... I hope that everybody here enjoyed this video and that I answered a lot of questions or at least pointed everybody in a direction that's gonna help them. If you're looking at starting your own content, start slow. Just make sure you are recording, trying to record and upload one time a week consistently. Use what you have around the house first and then make it happen from there, okay? That's what I totally recommend, start slow. Just make sure you're putting up something and getting out there and getting involved in the community, putting your foot, your little foot into the community and dipping your toes in and seeing what happens and seeing where you want to go. Because what I had planned three years ago is 100% not where I'm at today. I did not plan for this. <laughs> Absolutely games of fire. I, I started with podcasting as an adult podcasting game show. This is not an adult podcasting game show, okay? <laughs> so completely different than where I started. So just you getting out there, putting your toes in, figuring out everything, you figure it out as you go along. And you, you go with what works for you. And you find your own persona. And you find your own way of doing things. And you find your creativity that brings viewers to you and your content. So I'm super excited for everybody that's going to watch this and that's gonna make their own content. And if you end up making content, go ahead and put it as a link. I'm gonna go look at it, okay? If you make content, I'm gonna go look, okay? <laughs> Let's see here, Fatal says, we played Cards Against Humanity for days. It was a dark time. <laughs> oh my gosh, Cards Against Humanity, I'm so bad at that game. Like, so, so bad at that game. I don't even wanna talk about how bad I am. And, oh, by the way, 991 subs. We're almost there. High five. High five, community. I'm so excited. I can't wait till we break 1,000. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited about that. Nathan says, for example, I have a nephew around the house, so I used him. 100%. Yeah, absolutely, okay? <laughs> you use whoever you have around the house to play games with, all right? <laughs> I have a video of me performing, but the only video of me online. <laughs> That's okay. If anybody starts a channel and everything, I will 100%. I'll go to your channel and check it out. I'll give you, I'll give you some views, okay? Other than that, we will see all of you hopefully on Sunday when we play Tiny Epic Pirates. Of course, we will have our Kickstarter show back on Fridays. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to our content and check out some of the other cool stuff that we do. And if you really want to see that marketing video, let me know in the comments and I will make that happen at some point. We'll go over all sorts of crazy marketing stuff because it is a jungle out there, right? Thank you for everybody that joined us. I love you guys in chat. We will talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs> oh my gosh, my stream deck isn't going to work. I'm going to have to do it the hard way. Hold on, hold on. Bye. Bye.